I'm the Chief Information Officer of Refinitiv. And um, I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about how we at Refinitiv think about AI. I'm going to talk about augmented intelligence as opposed to artificial intelligence. I'm going to share some of my thoughts on where I think technology and cloud technologies are going to go and how that will impact AI. I'm going to talk a bit about our data as we see that as a core part of the engine. And then I'm going to conclude with a few thoughts on ethics, governance, talent, regulation. I'm going to be deliberately a provocative, so feel free to throw things at me or ask me questions, and, um, or both. And uh, one of the other things I'd say is uh, I have a team who um, love to argue, right, all of the time. They say they're having a conversation and a, di and a discussion with me. I say they're arguing with me. But um, if while I'm talking you think I'm either right or wrong, and more importantly, if you think I'm wrong or you've got any questions, there are some, there are some of microphones around the place, so please do just interrupt. So I'm, so I'm happy to engage in a conversation if you know, what you think I'm saying um, you know, doesn't concord with some of your thoughts. That would be quite uh, helpful. So I wanted to start a little bit talking about how we think about Cloud, ad cloud adoption and that fueling AI. Because cloud, you know, with the advent of elastic compute and elastic storage and large amounts of data, is allowing AI to grow at an ever increasing pace. Now, there's a huge amount of debate about is AI going to replace jobs and are there going to be less jobs? And you heard some great examples earlier today. We heard somebody say, Imagine when driverless cars really happens and you get all of that free time in order to work. I was thinking, imagine when driverless cars happen and you have all that free time to do something else other than work. But anyway, um, we had another example where somebody said over 90% of the alerts in financial crime at the moment are false alerts. So as those things begin to evolve, I don't believe for one moment that AI is going to replace jobs. And in fact, a lot of the studies that have been published now, now how these people do these studies, of course, uh, is hard to determine. But I believe, and we believe at Refinitiv, that AI is not going to replace jobs. It's going to enable financial professionals and other professionals, but we're thinking financial services now, to operate more effectively. The the um, natural processing language, the algos, the machine learning can help professionals take better decisions by doing a lot of the background work. We believe that AI is going to help, as well as people, to be more effective, to be a lot more efficient. They'll be able to get a lot more throughput through better targeting. And we believe foundationally that AI is going to help financial professionals to be better revenue generators or, and or better at serving their customers because you can embed more effectively into a workflow, you can target the operator a lot more effectively, and so we can therefore allow people to be more effective. And that's why we talk about smarter humans operating with smarter machines, not AI replacing people. Okay, and that's kind of foundational to how we think about delivering our data and delivering our technology. And I thought now I'd make a few kind of bold or semi-bold predictions about where I think this is going to go, and then we can get into a conversation about how it's going to impact us. So I believe that in the next five years, and why five years? It's because I can't think any further ahead than five years, you know, with the rate of of technology change, that 75% of either risk-taking decision-makers or financial services-style decision-makers, like traders, will either have to have an advanced qualification in data science or be supported by uh, a set of algos or a robot or a person who has got an advanced qualification in artificial intelligence and data science, which means a foundational transformation in how we're going to have to be set up as a workforce. I believe that in five years, 80% of the data centers that we're currently operating ourselves will have closed. Storage, compute, capability will be available out there somewhere. And we heard some really interesting conversations just now about interoperability and in containers. 
So I believe absolutely that the hard work that we have to do to create infrastructure is going to disappear. Okay. I believe also that as we go into this world of 5G, right, 5G will have come and gone, 6G will have come and gone, 7G will have come and gone, you know, whatever those things mean, and basically we're going to have super high bandwidth capability, network capability around us all of the time. There'll be no need to come in here, you log on to a Wi-Fi network, etc. It will all be available all of the time at a personal level, but also for large corporations. Okay, so, so the complexity and difficulty of, of um, connecting one thing to another is going to go away, and the prices are going to continue to drop. Okay, and then the fourth thing I believe is that we will have intelligent edge devices, genuinely intelligent devices at the edge, be they chips, be they phones, be they thermostats, be they Alexa, clever Alexas, or whatever they are, and lots of new things will develop. We'll have intelligent devices at the edge that have artificial intelligence capability of their own. So they'll be able to take decisions based on the environmental input. But they will also call back up to, uh, to wherever the storage and compute is and send jobs or ask for data to be gathered together to process. And the answer will be sent back down. That means foundationally, I keep saying foundationally, that means that computing is going to change completely. Intelligent edge devices that are taking autonomous decisions, large amount of um, el um, elastic uh, capability up in the cloud. And the reason I think that those things are important is because as the capabilities of what I'm calling cloud, but think of that as broader technology, and the reason I've said cloud instead of broader technology is because actually it's going to become completely our data center of the future. As that happens, it will start to unlock other capabilities. And then we've hardly heard the word blockchain, have we, all day, which is a great thing, right? Imagine two years ago, you couldn't go anywhere, could you, without hearing about blockchain? And we very rarely hear it. But the point about this is, intelligent devices on the edge that people have been calling the Internet of Things, and distributed ledger technology is also going to expand at a huge pace, in my view. So, and distributed ledger, and whether it's powered by blockchain or some other underlying fabric, I've no idea. But the point being is, edge device will be able to communicate with other edge devices intelligently and take decisions. And they will also be able to communicate in a group in a distributed ledger style of technology. That will further fuel more and more developments in AI. And remember, I'm thinking about AI as augmented intelligence, the machine helping the person and other people helping the people who are being helped by the machine. And so we will go through deep learning. And quantum computing is getting closer and closer to, um, you know, to becoming um, a reality. It's still in the labs. I've seen one in um, a Microsoft lab. But quantum computing that is basically going to unleash even more computing power is going to become a reality. At the same time as we're seeing you know, network as an openly available capability, at the same time as we're seeing intelligent devices all able to communicate with one another and back up to the cloud. And of course, we at Refinitiv therefore believe that data is going to become more and more and more important because in all of this, there's going to be a huge amount of noise. Right? This kind of tsunami of information. And how are, we, how are we going to determine which of the data is important for the algos, for the robots, for the people with augmented capabilities to take the right decisions? Okay? Now, we've had scaled linked data for a long time. And we've been training simple algos for quite a while to be able to build out that capability. So anybody who's used any of our perm ID style of capability, et cetera, will know that we've already got that and we've been working with it for a long time. Important point is we believe that the shape of the data is going to continue to change. Much more documented base, much less unstructured base, much more finding a piece of text in a sea of data. And so as we do that, and we have more and more 
uh, expandable um, compute capability, we'll be able to continue to tag that, to link it, and to make it a lot more readable and interpretable by algos and by humans, smarter humans working with smarter machines. And I also believe that we're going to get to what I think of as um, predictive data. Now, we're already getting physical, physical devices that are digitally self-declaring. So a digital device can look at something and from its shape, color, style, etc., be able to derive a whole set of metadata. And that's coming more and more in the physical world, uh, particularly in fast-moving consumer goods where people buy a lot of things in a repetitive way. I believe that as we go down this journey, data is going to become self-declaring. So it's going to say, hello, I'm a piece of data, and I've got all these characteristics, and I can be used for the following things. Okay? So it will come off the exchanges or off the intelligent edge devices. Having been interpreted by the intelligence at the edge, it will get sent to the cloud, as it were, and it will already be self-declaring. The point of that is, data processors like ourselves and other data processes will be able to interpret all of that and create a huge amount of value out of it. And so we believe, therefore, this will be a virtuous cycle that continues to accelerate. And what that means, really, for the people in this room and a lot of our other colleagues across financial services and how, and how we think about all of that is so we think about a smarter company, how Refinitiv is using some of these new technologies in order to train ourselves. Okay? And when you speak to your account reps, they'll be able to talk about lots of examples of where we're using AI and starting to um, embed them in products. And you'd be glad to know I'm not going to try and get into a sales pitch. Any of my sales colleagues know when I go out on a sales call, it's a disaster because I never actually sell anything, but I like talking about it. But um, important. One important example, and it's just one example of how we adapt some technology for ourselves in order to then improve it and then make it available to customers. So we have a product called WorldCheck used in anti-money laundering and KYC, and I'm sure a lot of people are consuming uh, a WorldCheck. Now, it's made up of a lot of records of potentially politically exposed people and other people who you might not want to be involved in from a credit and processing perspective, right? The historical process has been very smart operator looking at the data, spending a large number of man days and in some cases person weeks or two, refine, tune that record to refresh the record and to understand its value. We've deployed AI techniques and machine learning techniques to support the operator. It goes out and scans huge amounts of data across the web, pulls it in, compares it, and allows the operator to tune a lot of that data without the operator being involved. Output of that is then that we get able to refresh our records quicker, add newer records quicker, and that helps us to um, manage the risk for our customers. Okay. And then we're starting to deploy that learning into all the rest of our content that we're tuning quicker and we're making more um, accurate, more responsive, etc. And so us evolving a smarter organization is helping us to produce smarter products, and that in turn is helping us to help our customers to become smarter. And that's an iterative process that we're going to continue. And there's been some conversations today as well about implementing an AI strategy. And if you haven't started already, you're behind the curve and people saying it's still in the lab, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're doing is working in the way that I've, you know, that I've just described. So we are working how to aggregate our data. We're building new algorithms. We're using it ourselves. And we're using that capability to tune our products so that we can then be better at operating and delivering it out. And then we're then creating intelligent data with insight, so we're starting to leverage AI. We don't believe that we're going to be a big AI capability provider. We believe that our data through this process becomes absolutely paramount to unleashing how all of you apply AI. There was a conversation earlier today when we were having a vote, and um, I think it was the colleague from 
think it was a colleague from Microsoft who said, we were asking the wrong question. What about skills? Okay, and you'll see I've put talent on the bottom of that. People say to me, you know, what keeps you awake at night? And the answer is whether or not Leeds United will get promoted. But apart from that, you're a tough audience, or it's late in the day. <laughs> but apart from that, the one really, really big challenge that we all have around this is skills and talent and capability. Because not many people have got these skills, and we have to evolve them at pace. We're doing it in a, a learning by doing kind of way, putting people on it. We're partnering with a number of the major cloud providers, and um, AWS are currently helping us do um, quite large amounts of work, as it has to be said, our GCP and, and the Azure cloud. And they're helping us in order to evolve our capability, in order to grow our skills. And I see this as kind of the single biggest challenge for AI that will be fueled through cloud adoption. Which um, takes me to a few final thoughts. And um, I'll start kind of with the talent piece and a kind of a quite provocative challenge that if you think about AI and the startups and what's really happening in the world, lots of smart, white, middle class, 24 to 27 year old Americans in California are building a majority of this stuff. And when you think about the potential implications of that, are we going to go back to a world that Dame Stella was describing earlier today when actually a load of blokes were, de you know, were determining how algorithms were going to behave and predict things? And so I think there's a real, real challenge around diversity and around talent, and we should all be really, really thoughtful about this. Because if we've got algorithms written by men that then learn, from a load of you know, male style behavior and then evolve, you know, we could end up in a pretty difficult position. And um, GDPR and other regulation is also going to become increasingly important in this. There's a really interesting uh, clause, for want of a better phrase, in GDPR that says, as a consumer, you can opt out of your data being used by an algorithm if the algorithm's outcomes and where it's consuming data from can't be predicted. So it's just really interesting. So if algorithms are then taking decisions and it's based on a smaller subset of data, is there an implication for that? And what's going to happen about future data um, sets and how algos deal with them? I was speaking to uh, a large hedge fund in the United States you know, last week, and they were saying their biggest challenge is what they call auditability and traceability. How do they know that when they get a piece of data, all of the steps it's been through and where it's come from? So another kind of really, really big challenge. So as well as the whole diversity in the AI capability, the whole point about auditability and traceability becomes a really important point. And then one other thing that we should all be thoughtful about in this space is the cyber risk. What if the bad guys and bad girls start to get into the algos or into the robots that are taking some of the decisions and we have a self-learning experience? Can they actually start to change some of the outcomes in order to change some of the cause and effect of that? And so the whole governance and compliance around this becomes uh, increasingly important. And so I would just leave you, you know, with a set of thoughts around this. Um, we believe that data is going to be one of the core differentiators between how people uh, apply artificial intelligence and how it adds real value. Because without really, really clear data, the AI is going to go awry. I would, I would suggest to all of us that we need to be very thoughtful about the ethics about the implications of ethics and the implications of regulation. So thank you for listening to me. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Brennan Carley, who's going to talk about some cloud insights.